Learning to breastfeed in public can sometimes be a daunting task for a new mom, especially in the United States where mothers can sometimes be discriminated against for nursing in public. How can a mother ease into nursing in public and how can she empower herself to do this with ease? Today, I'm thrilled to introduce our expert, Abby Thiering, or as you may better know her, the badass breastfeeder, to discuss how to become a badass public breastfeeder. Breast milk, it does a baby good. Silly daddy, boobs are for babies. I make milk, what's your superpower? If my breastfeeding offends you, put a blanket over your head. Dairy diva, don't be lactose intolerant. Nursing nature's own breast enhancement. Meals on heels. Whoever said there's no use crying over spilled milk, never had to pump. Breast milk, all udders are inferior. Whatever your point of view, we're here to support your breastfeeding goals. We're the boob group, because mothers know breast. Welcome to The Boob Group, broadcasting from the Birth Education Center of San Diego. The Boob Group is your weekly online, on-the-go support group for all things related to breastfeeding. I'm your host, Robin Kaplan. I'm also an international board-certified lactation consultant and owner of the San Diego Breastfeeding Center. Thanks to all of our loyal listeners who have joined the Boob Group Club. Our members get all of our archived episodes, bonus content after each new show, plus special giveaways and discounts. Subscribe to our monthly newsletter for a chance to win a membership to our club each month. Another way for you to stay connected is by downloading our free app available in the Android and iTunes marketplaces. So today we are joined in the studio by three lovely panelists. Uh, ladies, will you please introduce yourselves? My name is Rachel Rainbolt. I am 30 years old. I am the author of the Sage Parenting book, and I have three little boys who are seven, five, and one. And I'm Jenny Kuda, and I'm 24. I work with children with special needs here in the San Diego area as a Navy contractor. And I have one daughter. She is four months old, and her name is Scarlett. Hi, I'm Tiffany Castro, and I'm 31. I'm currently a stay-at-home mom for the first time, um, and previously I was in social services. I have one child. His name is Drew, and he's 10 months old. All right. Well, ladies, welcome to the show. <laughs> So we're here today with Alex Kaslowitz, who is the sales and marketing director of Becco, which is definitely one of our favorite baby carrying websites. And so Alex, welcome to the show. Um, would you mind telling us a little bit about your company? When was Becco first started and what was the inspiration for it? Sure thing, Robin. Thank you so much, by the way, for having us. Becco started eight years ago uh, when Gabby, the CEO and founder, uh, her son was born. It's a truly time and tested product based on her son. It was based on her real experiences. She needed uh, a way to carry her son. She tried the options that were currently on the market and they just weren't good enough or limited within options. Uh, so she <laughs> didn't come to this country with much money. Uh, she came from Prague, Czech Republic. She literally bought a a broken sewing machine, fix it, learn how to sew in a few weeks, and just made a carrier. Uh, she walked into a supermarket. A mom came up to her and said, that looks beautiful. You know, where did you get it? She said, I made it. <laughs> and it started from there. That's fantastic. So tell us a little bit about Becco's products. What type of carriers do you make? And is there an age limit for how old a child can be worn in these carriers? Sure. What we do here is we try to limit the any pain point of thinking about wearing in general so you can just share your day with baby. So we provide uh, the perfect combination between comfort and style so that we can help you power through your daily mommy-daddy duties and keep yourself hands-free so, and obviously baby safe and close all the time. With Gemini, uh, which is our flagship uh, baby carrier, our first model, uh, you can wear baby from day one, so seven pounds, uh, up to 35 pounds. Same thing with Soleil, uh, with an infant insert. Soleil is our new model. Uh, with an infant insert with Soleil, you can wear a baby from day one, and that goes up to 45 pounds, so it has a little bit longer of a lifespan. And is that something that can be worn on the back as well? Sure. So uh, Gemini uh, can be worn on the front, facing in or facing out, on the hip or on the back. And Soleil, because of the difference in the seat, uh, it can only be worn on the front facing in, the hip and back. So only Gemini faces out. Okay. And so the Soleil is your newest carrier. It, what makes this carrier different from the other ones? Oh, Soleil. We love it. We love it so much. <laughs> Have you guys seen pictures of it? Oh, my God. We just love it. Well, we pretty much polled uh, our consumers and um, fans and pretty much asked what they would like to see added or included within the carrier. So there's enhanced padding on the, the like head padding. There's enhanced leg padding. And if you, if, you sh if you show it against any other carrier in the market, it's truly unrivaled leg padding. So there's 
there's no chafing, much more support. Uh, a true darted seat, plenty of storage, and, and also, and this is a really cool feature, mix and match capabilities with the accessory options that we've brought in with the Soleil. So it's a really, really excellent car. We love it. I'm glad you brought up the accessories too, because I have to tell you, when looking at the website, I'm a little bit obsessed with your accessory bags. <laughs> they're um, they're well, awesome. And so um, <laughs> what are these accessory bags made out of and how do they work with your carriers? So everything's made out of 100% cotton. Uh, we do also include uh, an organic line uh, as, as well, uh, so that's an option. The idea behind most of what we do is that, you know, we believe that you don't have to compromise style and design just for function. Uh, so just because a carrier is ergonomic and structured doesn't mean it has to be crunchy necessarily. It can be stylish and trendy. Uh, the best part about this Soleil in regards to style is that you can start with, let's say, a solid print and then start to accessorize out. So you'd mix and match by adding a new pattern hood or a new pattern carry-all bag, which simply just snaps onto the front and kind of replaces the panel. So you can continue pretty much to accent the carrier as new patterns come out and completely update the look and feel over and over. Fantastic. And where can our listeners find your Beko products? You can find our stuff everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, specialty retailers all around the U.S., all around the world. Uh, we, we, we just, we were so happy. We, we try to stay within retailers that provide that educational experience because I think that even though they photograph beautifully, they're a product that has to be touched and felt and worn. Uh, it, it, every carrier looks and feels the same when they weigh one pound without a baby in it. So I think that it's really smart and we really encourage uh, those savvy moms and dads to go to, to uh, a retail location where they can actually try and demonstrate with, with a, a, a baby doll, at least a weighted baby doll, so that they can see the difference and feel the difference. So, And, and hopefully they, they, they kind of like our stuff. Wonderful. And what is your website? Uh, BeccoBabyCarrier.com. Okay, fantastic. Well, thanks so much, Alex. We really appreciate your time and uh, for you sharing with us a lot more about the Becco company. Thanks so much, Robin. So today on The Boob Group, we're discussing how to become a badass public breastfeeder. Our expert, Abby Thiering, started the wildly popular blog and Facebook page, The Badass Breastfeeder, after her son Jack was born and she had a rough start to breastfeeding. Now she is an inspiring breastfeeding mother around the world where women seek support to help them normalize breastfeeding in public, and she also talks about practicing gentle parenting. Thanks for joining us, Abby, and welcome to our show. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, sure. So, Abby, how did you start the Badass Breastfeeder? Well, the Badass Breastfeeder was really the the perfect accident. Um, I was on maternity leave after I had my my son, Jack, and I decided not to go back to work. Um, I had such a horrible, horribly rough time um, getting started with breastfeeding, as, as you just said, and I just felt like I needed to spend as much time with him getting this down, getting this right as possible. And um, when we did get it right and we started to go to just to get really going, um, I felt so amazing. I felt more amazing than I've ever felt in my life. I felt so inspired. I wanted to start writing about it. And people kept telling me like, well, you should, you should write a blog. You should write a blog. And, and it, that blogging, I'd never really, I didn't really know much about it. And I thought that it just seemed too hard. Like people smarter and more talented than me, um, you know, did that type of thing. And, um, I was in a mommy group on Facebook, a mom support group on Facebook. And, um, I posted a picture of me breastfeeding in the park. Um, it was, um, you know, we had, we had, we had really been really successful with breastfeeding and, um, Jack had been sick and he'd gotten better and it was really scary. And it was just this week where I just felt so, you know, I just had this, this amazing, like, proud mommy moment, and I posted this picture in a private group on Facebook, and, I mean, I was, like, outright harassed. Um, just, I was told that it was, you know, disgusting, and, oh, my God, like, how can you post this picture, and how can you do that in public, and blah, blah, blah. And I had no idea that this type of thing existed. I had no idea that, like, what I was doing was odd, or I just, I had no idea. And I thought, well... <laughs> Okay, maybe my blog will also have a Facebook page (laughs) where people can post their pictures publicly and they can get shared around the Internet and they can be safe 
and, you know, people can get kind of more used to seeing these kind of pictures um, because I know how it felt. I know how it felt like being, feeling amazing and how it felt feeling so down in the dumps after that. So that's, that's, that was all. That's how it started. That's amazing. Um, so since you started your Facebook and your blog, your Facebook page and your blog, you have also started something called Becoming a P- Badass Public Breastfeeder, which is your e-course. And so why did you decide to start this and what are, what do moms receive when they sign up for it? Well, I started this because, because just, continuing the story. So I started this Facebook page and I would post these pictures of me breastfeeding in public and, you know, and all these, like what I, what I found to be beautiful settings and just the, you know, the most amazing things that I wanted to be doing with my son, which is just living my life and breastfeeding. And, um, so many people I heard from so many women, so many women would be like, Oh, I wish I, I wish I could do that. Or I'm too afraid to do that. Or I can't believe you do that at the park or, oh my gosh, I can't believe that, you know, every, anybody has the confidence to do that. And I just, I was, I, I was really, I was really surprised at, um, at this response. So I just felt like I had quit my job and the job that I had quit was a social work job where I advocated for um, abused and neglected teenagers. And I just felt like this, kind of, I quit my job, I was hearing all this from these women, I felt this kind of very natural, instinctual uh, turn in my passion for advocating for people, and it just kind of seemed just like so natural, like, okay, I'm an advocate, this is, I'm here, I'm hearing another problem, and I just felt like, oh, well, I got to start, I just felt so passionate about like putting something together that would, that would inspire moms and help moms that were in the same position, exact same position that I was in because, you know, I, because I had felt the, the harassment as well and, um, but also felt very passionate about breastfeeding in public. And so I wrote this and it was so much fun writing and I, and I, I, I talked to as many women as I possibly could to, to find out exactly what, what they wanted in this. And, uh, so, so now it's a, it's a, it's an e, it's an email course. So you sign up and then one, every day for seven days, you get one email and it's a different topic and, you know, you go through the seven days and, and that's it. It's free. You put your email address in there and you get for seven days, you get an email address or an email, an email uh, message from me about different topics and, I yeah. love it because it's so comprehensive. It's it's a super. We're linking to it on our on our page, by the way, for this episode, and um, it's just it's comprehensive. It's easy to read. Like you know, your little sass comes through, which is awesome. <laughs> but um, but it's just it's very. It's basic information, you know, just how to how to make this all work for you. And it's super non-judgmental, which, you know, we at the Boob Group absolutely love as well. So, um, Abby, why why is it so important to you for moms to feel comfortable breastfeeding in public? And, and why do you think that there are so many moms um, that are nervous to do this? Well, I think it's really important for people to breastfeed in public because, I think, I mean, breastfeeding rates in America are terrible. I mean, you know, people are not, people aren't breastfeeding, and they're especially not breastfeeding beyond, like, newborn age. Um, And I think it's just because, like, we don't see people breastfeeding. I mean, even for me, like, I really wanted to breastfeed. I really, I really wanted to, and and, and I can't even tell you why. I can't tell you why. Like, I, I, I never saw anybody breastfeed. I'm, I, I don't know why it just, it seemed, it was, I was just drawn to it. I was just really, I really felt like, I think it was probably the bond. Like I was just really drawn to that, but, but we don't, we don't see it happening. And I feel, I feel passionate that if we, if we saw breastfeeding in public as just people were doing it, if we, if it became something that we saw every day, I think more people would do it because it would be like, Oh, okay. Well, that's just like, kind of normal, you know, thing to do. Um, and I think that, um, I mean, I just think it's, it's, it's so important. It, it, really, more babies would get breast milk if we yeah. saw, <laughs> you know, if we saw people, if it just became a kind of a norm, a cultural norm, because now it's like cultural, it's a cultural norm right now is a baby getting a bottle. Exactly. And that's very normal. 
and you know that breastfeeding being so abnormal, I think keeps women from breastfeeding. It keeps people nervous about breastfeeding, and um, also in this country, you know, we we're so over sexualized. Our breasts are completely over sexualized, and. I think women become self-conscious about that. It's like, well, my breasts are, not that anybody really like says this consciously, but I mean, this is like, you know, breasts in America are like these sexual objects. And so women become kind of self-conscious about exposing themselves kind of about like, you know, um, just doing this kind of thing in public because they're afraid. They're afraid. They're afraid of being harassed. They're afraid of, of, of taking their breasts out. They're afraid of being stared at, you know, women feel self-conscious about their bodies overall. You know, I think it's just, it's just people just become afraid of it. Absolutely. Ladies in our studio, um, were, were you nervous to breastfeed in public initially and, and, or during a certain situation? Uh, Jenna, you're nodding. What, I will go to you first. Um, I've constantly been nervous about breastfeeding in public, but it's, it kind of got to me more so when I was out in public with my husband because I had a feeling that he was just kind of uneasy about it. He had never seen anybody breastfeed either. And his mom works in a NICU up at Stanford Hospital, and she is the goddess of everything yeah. breast milk up there. But he had just never been exposed to it, and he'd never seen it. And up until this point, they were his. He, they were like, <laughs> okay, these are my things to play with. And now they're on loan to this little baby. And it's just like... I don't know if I want to watch that. Mm-hmm. And in the beginning, he was he was more so on my mind about, okay, I don't want to make him feel bad and him embarrassed because he knows that I, I don't have any shame. I had a breast reduction when I was 18, and I wanted to show everybody my scars. <laughs> I was like Franken woman with my 150 <laughs> stitches, and I didn't really have that nervousness about myself. I was more nervous about how I was going to handle other people reacting to it. And I didn't, I got a lot of negativity, but at the same time, I was more able to handle that than I was their feelings about it. And I just, I think still, even when I'm out in public, I get that nervousness in that, okay, is anybody going to say anything to me? What are they going to look like? And, and I just... I just have to give myself a little pep top. <laughs> my baby needs to eat. She's hungry. I'm not going to subject everybody else to her screaming and crying because they have an issue with me feeding her. Yeah. So, How about you, Tiffany? Oh, yeah. I was horrified, like terrified. It was probably one of the most terrifying things I, like I've ever done, decisions yeah. I had to you know, go ahead and make. And I'm still nervous every time, although I kind of consider myself a breastfeeding ad- – well, not kind of. I do. <laughs> a breastfeeding advocate now, I still am terrified every time to an extent. And maybe that's just because <laughs> I'm a pretty shy, uh, very conservative, like modest person with my body and definitely very insecure and didn't want to show my breasts. And But just like the judgments, um, you know, just worrying about what other people thought and would say and do – so um, the first time I ever did it was the worst. I was horrified, but I lived through it. And so I just keep taking that step each day and just making a conscious decision to do it. And, you know, those nerves are still there, but I choose to ignore them and just carry on. Yeah. How about you, Rachel? Yeah, I was very nervous the first time with my first. Like I said, I have three. So lots of years of breastfeeding under my belt now. And at this point, I don't feel nervous at all when I breastfeed. But definitely when I was starting out with my first, I was very nervous. I think it's like a lack of confidence in the process of breastfeeding to begin with, like not really, you know, am I doing it right? Is he, you know, he just popped off and trying to figure out like, where do my arms go? Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, (laughs) all of the, you know, messages from society of like, you should definitely do it, you have to do it, but at the same time, don't do it and you shouldn't ever do it. (laughs) So it was a tough position to be in. Yeah. And it, as as all of you have said, time and time and time and practice and practice and practice does make it easier. But that first time can be, I, I totally, I, my son was six weeks old. We were traveling. It was in California Chicken Cafe in Los Angeles. And, um, and I was so nervous that back fat was showing and, you know, my extra pregnancy weight and all this kind of stuff. And, and I remember my son just, I wasn't even paying attention and he just latched right on. And I was like, oh, like you were talking, Rachel, you know, we're so worried about the process. And sometimes the process totally knows what it's yeah. doing and the baby knows what he or she is oh, doing. Definitely. And I, my, my emotions were getting in the way, but um, Abby, so most of the women here have brought up onlookers. So that's that's kind of where the fear comes from. So what are your top tips for dealing with staring onlookers? Well, this is 
this was the absolute number one reason that I heard from women about being nervous about n- nervous uh, breastfeeding in public. So absolutely, that's a that's a very normal fear to have. It's a fear that a lot of women have. Most women have, um, and I think it's really important for me to pe- for people to know that I have that fear too. I'm not. I'm not without fear. I didn't start this whole. Situ- I didn't start the badass breastfeeder. Like I don't care what anybody thinks, and mm-hmm. I have no fear. Like I don't. That's not at all the situation going on. Like I completely recognize these feelings within myself every single time I breastfeed in public. Every single time. Two years into it, I recognize <laughs> this. I'm with you guys. I feel that. I totally am with you. My top tips, I would say, that are change your thinking about your body. Number one, change that thinking about your body. And I know it's hard. I totally know that. But we become so focused on our insecurities about our body um, that when we can reframe our thinking about our body, it actually changes the way that we feel about ourselves altogether and the way that we act. So if we're kind of, you know, we know deep down inside that we are these beautiful, badass, breastfeeding (laughs) women um, if we can, if we can start to kind of force ourselves to think about, think that about ourselves, um, we are going to, we're going to be more confident. We, you know, sit up, look people in the face, smile, do those things that you that you want to do. You know, we all want to do this. We all want to be, you know, this this you know this breastfeeding goddess. Like, mm-hmm. you know, this is how we feel. This is totally normal because this is exactly what we are. And if you if you can start to tell yourself that you are this because you are, um, we're going to start to feel differently and act differently in public. Um, and then I would say also like you know if you're breastfeeding in public, you know read a book or play with your phone or or kind of you know play with your kid's hair or something like that. You know something that's just kind of focusing on on something other than 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 the rest of the world. You know, just, you know, forget about, you know, trying to figure out whether that, like, weird guy over there is staring at you. Just, <laughs> just, just kind of do, like, kind of do your thing and, you know, kind of, you know, do a little, like, playing, twiddling, you know. We all have phones. We all have little, like, books that we want to read. Um, and also I would say if you if you are more comfortable using a cover – then use it. There's this, I feel like there's this, um, there seems to be this kind of battle with in the, within the breastfeeding world where it's like cover or don't cover and people who don't cover are better who people who cover. And this is ridiculous. <laughs> I just, this is nonsense. If you feel more comfortable covering, then by all means, cover it's fine. You know, a cover, a a straight up nursing cover, um, a light blanket, a scarf, something like that. If that's, if that makes you feel more confident, makes you feel better about breastfeeding, then your baby's getting breast milk. And at the end of the day, this is what it's about. The absolute most important thing is engage with your baby. Your baby's not going to give you bad looks. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Your baby's looking at you with these like amazing, beautiful eyes. Like your baby is just like looking up and You know, engage with your baby, play with their hair, play with their feet, play with their arms and fingers. And, you know, because the bottom line is, if you are, if you are, if if you are noticing all this stuff going on around you, if you are noticing that all these people are doing this stuff around you, then you're really not fully engaged with your baby. Because if you were fully engaged with your baby, you really wouldn't notice, right? Those are great tips. But we also have to realize as women that we're awesome. (laughs) <laughs> you know, people are going to stare at us because we're beautiful. We are social creatures. We stare at each other. We are so interested in each other. But we are interested in each other on, on, on levels that, like, that it, even as breastfeeders, we can't understand. I mean, people stare at us because they want to see what our, our hands look like. They want to stare and they want to see what our boob looks like. Whether and They might be looking at us breastfeeding because... I mean, they're just interested. They're just like, oh, my God, I've never really seen that. And, you know, you might have an ugly shirt on. That person might be like, (laughs) where'd you get that shirt? Or you might have a booger hanging out of your nose. You know, you don't know why somebody's staring at you. You become your your, your own worst enemy in this situation. Like, oh, this person's staring at me. 
um, you know, when when you don't really know what's going on in the other person's mind. <laughs> Abby, it could be a lactation consultant who wants to give you the thumbs up as well. You never know. <laughs> if somebody might be like, that is the most amazing person ever, and I want to give her a high five. You it's know, true. And, exactly. I'm totally a lurker, but it's, or not a lurker, I totally stare, but it's because I'm like, if she looks at me, I want to give her oh the thumbs god. up. <laughs> oh my god, I am the worst. I am like constantly staring people up and down. I'm like, oh my god, there's a breastfeeder. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so say to my husband, even my husband goes, Abby, Abby. He like elbows me, breastfeeder, breastfeeder. <laughs> <laughs> like, breastfeeder, 12 o'clock. <laughs> we're, the, we're the worst. We're like, totally. Oh, totally. All right. So ladies, we want to hear where, where have you breastfed? What are some of the most common ones? And if you have a few crazy ones, we'd like to hear that too. So I see Jenna writing some stuff down. <laughs> Jenna, Jenna, where have you nursed in public? Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as soon as I got over my own issues of my own fear, I kind of went crazy about it because I am extremely busy all the time and I'm going everywhere whenever I can. Um, and we travel a lot. My husband's in the military and we have gone to Las Vegas to help family. His family lives in Lake Tahoe. We've driven there, um, breastfed around the lake, breastfed on the rock that there's a big old sign that says Las Vegas and Lake Tahoe. Um, Whole Foods was the first place that I had ever breastfed in public and, the girl was just so taken aback, and she had been like, oh, well, it's really nice that you cover. And I said, oh, is it now? And sh- my daughter ended up kicking the blanket off right in front of her, and I said, well, she heard you. Um, so we don't cover anymore. We don't have a blanket because she just gets annoyed by it. And I would because I kind of am larger chested, and I would like to cover, but she doesn't do that. Um, we have a huge park here in San Diego called Balboa Park, and we live very close to it, so we breastfeed in the park often. The zoo, the car, on military bases. This morning, I was breastfeeding on a balcony outside um, <laughs> watching San Diego Pride Parade walk, walk by, and all of these little kids are running around, and <laughs> there's people staring and looking, and I breastfeed anywhere. Anytime that she's hungry, I feed her, and it just doesn't, it doesn't matter where I'm at. I, I could be... I breastfed when my in-laws were here, and that was, I think, the most awkward because I wasn't sure how my father-in-law was going to handle it. But I, I do it regardless. And if, like I said, if she's hungry, she's hungry, and she's going to get fed. Exactly. So, how about you, Rachel? Uh, yeah, everywhere. I think like when you have your first, you can really um, sort of base your life around the needs of your first and what's happening for you in your life. But once you have more than one kid, you can't really do that. So with you know, my other two kids and their needs and their schedules and their lives. Um, I just breastfeed anywhere and everywhere. While guest lecturing in a college classroom, I was breastfeeding. While I also like to take, I mean, obviously with the kids, we like to take pictures. But I always, anytime we go anywhere cool, I always try to snap a photo of me breastfeeding in that place. Just like to have those special memories of that time with these kids. Like we went back to visit the college we went to and I took a picture sitting on the sign with all the kids and the little one was breastfeeding and stuff like that. You know, just like these cool places we go. They're kind of like these special moments captured in time that I just want to treasure. Absolutely. How about you, (laughs) Tiffany? Um, Well, for me, I considered breastfeeding in public the first time when I did it at the hospital in front of the nurses. Like, to (laughs) me, that was nuts. That was insane. I was so horrified. I didn't want the nurses to look at me. The lactation consultant, I was embarrassed. Um, So that's just my own crazy hang-ups, and that's how terrified I was. And then I kind of, like, took that empowerment and went and nursed in public in my mind by hiding in um, dressing rooms, like at the mall. And I was like hiding, but it was still, I was like, I'm outside. It's not in my home. Like I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And now looking, yeah, Yeah. exactly. And then I had to build up and then, you know, finally one day in Target, I really didn't have a choice and, you know, I covered and whatever, but I was like, okay, I did it here. And now, you know, now that I feel like real confident, not real, but more confident about it. um, I love doing it in nature, like doing it on the beach, Mm -hmm. watching the waves, best thing ever um also in the mountains we went hiking and camping and and just doing it out you know in the fresh air and the sun something about being in nature and doing something so natural and beautiful just makes me feel so peaceful and at one and you know that's awesome look how far you've come i know it's crazy (laughs) i couldn't even do it in front of a lactation consultant like i was crying and now i'm like look at me (laughs) like 
That's I'm free. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, when we come back, we'll discuss with Abby um, how to deal with family members and friends and sometimes partners who are uncomfortable with nursing in public, as well as some favorite comebacks for when there's an issue that you need to share your opinion with when you're out in public and someone says something to you. So we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. We are here with Abby Thiering from The Badass Breastfeeder. We're talking about becoming a badass public breastfeeder. So, Abby, um, Lillian asked this question on our Facebook page. What tips do you have for mothers who are used to nursing with breastfeeding pillows? Um, how, how could she do better breastfeeding in public and feel more comfortable without it? And do you think that carriers are super important when we're talking about this? Yeah, I think carriers are so important. But I, I remember, I remember being, you know, um, so addicted to my pillow. Like, you know, I got so used to that. So when, you know, when I was, when I was breastfeeding anywhere other than like the couch or the rocker where I was used to breastfeeding, it felt so awkward. So I think that, um, first of all, knowing that when you go out in public that you can, anything can double as a pillow. I mean, I would, you can, um, roll up, roll up your jacket. You can, you know, use a diaper bag. You can, um, I do this kind of thing where I take my, my leg and I put it up, I put my foot up on the chair and I kind of use my own leg to, um, prop my, prop my arm up, um, for a little bit of comfort. So I think that you can, we can find comfort that way in a lot of different ways. We just have to be, uh, creative, but I think baby wearing is definitely a big thing. I think that, um, baby wearing, getting, getting, a, getting a carrier, whatever it is that you're comfortable with. Um, and you can, you can nurse in virtually any carrier and you can be comfortable doing it too. And then you are just completely mobile. You're just walking, you're talking, you're out there doing it and you don't have to even sit down. Um, so then the, the pillow situation and the uh, resting your arm uh, just becomes obsolete because you're, you're, you're baby wearing. So I think baby wearing is so important. Um, when it comes to the topic of nursing in public. Okay. And what about, we? you know, I mentioned before we took our break that sometimes a woman may find that her partner, her family, or her friends are uncomfortable with her breastfeeding in public. So what what type of advice do you have for her? Yeah, this is, this is definitely one of the biggest issues, I think, that is um, out there with, with moms breastfeeding in public. Absolutely one of the biggest issues. And, you know, I think that um, it's really important to remember that when when our partners or you know our family members, friends, whatever are 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 concerned or or you know nervous about it, that that these things it's really important to, for us to come from a place that we understand that it's coming from a place of of love and concern for us. Um, you know, we live in a culture where this just isn't normal, and some people have a have a more difficult time with that than others. Um, I think that we have to really focus on starting a dialogue with these with 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 our family family and friends um, who may not feel comfortable with this. Um, starting an open ended dialogue uh, with them. And you know that's that's it can be really difficult because because I mean even I'll just t- you know just from all I can do is speak from my from my own experience is that you know when I feel a certain way and I want somebody else to feel that way I want it I I, I want this conversation to end like within five minutes you know like mm-hmm. I have a I have an opinion and I want you to agree with me within like you know point five seconds like you know just agree with me. Because I'm right. Come on. <laughs> you know, and I mean, that's like totally normal for us to, you know, for people to feel that we're like, I feel this way. Please agree with me. But, you know, it's, it's, I think it's important to realize that like people, that this just, this, 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 the discomfort with nursing in public runs so deep. It runs so deep in America that we have, we're surrounded with people that have these concerns on a level that they don't even know. You know that that the that, that body issues, that breastfeeding issues, that all this stuff runs so deep that we really have to just you know we have to start a conversation. We have to we have to really 
open the lines of communication. And um, this is if you if you sign up for the for the um, for the e-course, this is the biggest day. This is the longest. This is the this has the the biggest focus of the whole entire thing. So I would say, you know, briefly, I would say trying to find non-stressful parts of the day to kind of sit down and have a conversation with your partner, expressing each other, you know, listening to each other's feelings about it. You know, your partner doesn't want you to breastfeed in public. Okay, that's frustrating. I get it. But listen, listen to them. You know, try try listening to what they have to say because, you know, you might find that there's something that you can reassure them about. Um, and you want to express back to them how important it is to you that, that this happens. And, you you know, you really want to be focusing on on listening to each other and not, you know, kind of talking at each other. Um, and I would say that... Um, you know, it's just it's just basically an under, trying to come into an understanding of each other's feelings, and it's not going to happen in one day. It's not going to happen in one conversation. And I think a conversation on a positive note is a great thing. Picking it up the next day, a couple days later, you know, understanding that this is something. This is another. This is a parenting decision. It's like a parenting decision, like anything else. Like, should we cloth diaper? Who decides that in one conversation? <laughs> I mean, I, you know, should we cloth diaper? Should we spank or not spank? I mean, I, obviously, that's, you know, uh, so these are complicated. These are complicated things. I mean, you know, the, because culture plays such a huge part um, in in these dis, in these things. You know, we have these things that are so popular in our culture that we have to, we really have to sit down with our partners and decide what's going, you know, how we feel. And um, I know I'm talking a lot about this, but this is like such an important thing to me. This particular topic is so important to me. And I think it's just a matter of, 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 of really starting this conversation and really understanding that these are really complicated things and they're not simple. They're not one conversation decisions. And, and and really, you know, focusing on creating an understanding of each other's feelings it, it, on this topic. Okay, thank you. So we've had a bunch of people write into Facebook actually um, as we're conducting this interview. And so, um, MJ, our producer, can you choose one of your favorite questions that you would like to ask Abby? Hi, Abby. Hi, uh, Jesse. Roskop? I don't want to butcher the name, but um, she says, so when you're at a swimming pool filled with children who are learning to swim, do you just nurse without a cover right there, or would you be a little modest to keep from having the little kids just fall in the pool and freak out? (laughs) (laughs) Well, there's no such thing as a little kid freaking out about breastfeeding. There's only such thing as an adult freaking out about breastfeeding. That has been my experience as well, that I've breastfed, I mean, on every playground and every classroom experience, and the kids don't have issues with it. Um, the kids, and, and even if they do have a question, I've had a little, kim, little kid come up to me before and say, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. And my older child just said, feeding the baby milk, that's what babies drink. And the kid said, oh, okay, and walked yeah. away. Like, the kids don't have issues, so it's really the adults. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, there's so obviously there's so much influence that we have over our children, and we know this. We know this because we, we obviously know this because we take so much time to, to focus on what parenting decisions that we're going to make with our children. How are we going to deal with this? How are we going to deal with that? You know, and, and, and obviously this, this all plays such a huge part in how we, how we deal with our children. Like, obviously, this, everything that we do with our kids starts with us. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, actually, it's funny that you answer, that you ask this question as a, at, at a swimming pool because I'm visiting my parents in Wisconsin where we spent the day at the swimming pool. And Jack said several times, booby, booby, because he either, you know, fell down in the, the water got in his eyes or whatever, and he, you know, was surprised by it. So booby helped him, or he was hungry, and booby helped him. And, you know, we had booby, and, I mean, I, listen, I'm in Racine, Wisconsin. Like, and if I'm in Racine, Wisconsin, and nobody said anything to me, then, like, we're pretty good. 
So, Abby, we're running close to the end of time, but we I did want you to uh, share a few of your favorite comebacks um, on your e-course, and then I'd like to open it up to our panelists as well, if they've either had any in their mind that they've actually had to use or ones that they just keep back there filed away just in case. So, Abby, what would you say kind of your top your top four comebacks are if, if someone came over and asked you, what are you doing <laughs> or why are you doing that here? Well, you know, I don't know. My favorite ones are there seems to be this whole like popular this whole popular thought that you should breastfeed in the toilet, and I feel like <laughs> my favorite thing to say to that would be like, "You don't eat in the toilet, <laughs> so why should my child eat in the toilet?" And you know, pointing out that okay, so you're a little bit uncomfortable. Okay, well, my baby is a little baby, so he can't really deal with discomfort. You're an adult; you can deal with a little bit of discomfort. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, I'm going to open it up to our panelists as well. So, um, Rachel, you have any comebacks that you keep that you've either had to use or you, you keep filed away just in case? Yeah, just kind of relating to the bathroom thing. Like anytime we go out to eat, I'm kind of always, you know, got like the list of comebacks. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, the whole like, oh, if it makes you uncomfortable, you're welcome to eat your lunch in the bathroom or... Um, if it makes you uncomfortable to be around women and babies, you're welcome to stay someplace a little more private. Um, things like that. Just trying to turn on their head, like anything that they would be saying to me. But really, my favorite thing, just to keep at the forefront of my line, is just the law mm-hmm. that it's a legally protected right. So that's really the thing that's at the forefront of my mind. That well, actually, in California, it's a legally protected right to breastfeed in public um, with no condition. So. I'm sorry, that's what, you know, the law protects my right to be here and to breastfeed my baby. And that gives me confidence, too. Yeah, absolutely. How about you, Jenna? Same thing as what Rachel said. I was in Vegas at a chocolate factory and a woman, (laughs) an elderly woman had... Uh, asked me, well, you don't have anything to cover with, do you, sweets? And I said, no, I don't actually. And I didn't necessarily know the law in in Nevada, but being from California, I knew the law. And I had one of um, a card that Robin had actually given me that has the laws on the back of it to kind of show people that don't necessarily believe you or don't (laughs) believe the same thing that you do. Um, And I really love to fall back on the law because it does protect me and it does protect my baby and it ensures that everybody gets fed and everybody's cozy and and just fine. So I really like that one. Um, And just sticking up for for my baby's right to eat wherever anybody is allowed to eat. And we don't take our food to the bathroom. We don't take our food um, to anywhere private. We eat at the table. So when my daughter is hungry at the dinner table, she gets fed at the dinner table. Mm -hmm. Um, same thing. Cool. How about you, Tiffany? Well, luckily, I haven't been put in that position yet, and I fear every day that it's going to happen, and I'm not somebody who, when someone confronts me in the moment, um, I don't have zingers. I can't just come yeah. back. I'm not <laughs> witty like that, so I'm just hoping it never happens, and my ultimate plan was just to refer to the law and just, you know, be like, maybe just be nice to them, just smile and say thanks for your concern, and just so you know. And just try to leave it positive and nice. That way it doesn't cause more friction with the whole issue. And if you're confident and calm and at ease and positive, then the people around you tend to be that way as well. It can be very disarming. Like, it's hard to argue with somebody who's not arguing back. <laughs> I know, totally. Well, I just want to say a big, huge, huge, huge thank you to Abby and to our panelists in the studio today uh, for sharing this incredibly valuable information about breastfeeding in public, as well as sharing your experiences. Um, it's been, it was a pleasure having you on the show, Abby. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for having me here, and I really, I am so honored that you had me. Um, here interviewed with such amazing panelists that you had on here today. Oh, thank you. And so, and for our Boob Group Club members, our conversation will continue after the end of this show as Abby will discuss advice for a mom who has a very distractible nursling um, who likes to pop off a lot while they're feeding. (laughs) So for more information about our Boob Group Club, please visit our website at theboobgroup.com. So here's a comment from one of our listeners. This is from JD, and this is what she wrote. Thank you so much for the episode on breastfeeding after implants. I really do feel that you all are a source for judgment-free breastfeeding information now after hearing this podcast. Having my surgery wasn't something I would have chosen in a perfect world, but it was necessary. It is great that finally I was able to hear someone say, yes, you can breastfeed. It is possible even after implants. Without tagging on things that make me feel guilty that I had this surgery in the 
the first place. A lot of times when I've searched for information on this, that is all the people say to you and to let you know that you're probably a superficial, terrible person who doesn't think ahead or care about your future children if you got implant surgery. Thanks for not judging those of us who had this surgery or for assuming that you know the reasons why we have chosen to undergo this difficult surgery. I actually cried when I heard the expert and the panelists talking about how things can work and giving specific things I can do to help make it happen. This was so encouraging and something I had never heard before. Thank you for helping me feel like I can potentially do this. And thank you for being willing to break out of the norm. Women like me who have implants often have a sense that our breasts kind of betrayed us anyway, and not being womanly enough or weird like mine were, one so different from the other. So to hear that it is possible that my breasts could still do these amazingly womanly things of breastfeeding is so encouraging. Thank you. And thank you so much, JD, for writing this. I'm, I'm practically crying reading this. It was a really beautiful story. Thank you for sharing this comment. Um, and I'm so glad that it helped. This wraps up our show for today. We appreciate you listening to The Boob Group. Don't forget to check out our sister show, Preggy Pals, for expecting parents, and our show, Parent Savers, for moms and dads with newborns, infants, and toddlers. Thanks for listening to The Boob Group, your judgment-free breastfeeding resource. This has been a new mommy media production. The information and material contained in this episode are presented for educational purposes only. Statements and opinions expressed in this episode are not necessarily those of New Mommy Media and should not be considered facts. While such information and materials are believed to be accurate, it is not intended to replace or substitute for professional medical advice or care and should not be used for diagnosing or treating health care problem or disease or prescribing any medication. If you have questions or concerns regarding your physical or mental health or the health of your baby, Please seek assistance from a qualified health care provider. Hey, mamas. Don't forget to check out Mighty Moms. It's our online community built for new moms just like you. Not only can you connect with other moms, but you can also join us backstage for special mom-only online events. And you'll also be notified when we're recording so you can join us as a special guest. Visit our website, newmommymedia.com, and click on the Mighty Moms banner. It's free. That's newmommymedia.com. See you there.